Hello everyone, welcome. I apologize that you haven't seen me in a while. I have been sick and now thank God I'm able to come back and continue our lesson learning together. Ladies and gentlemen, we all have an obligation to see ourselves to be happy. We want to be happy. We can be happy. But again, there are certain steps certain things that we must do in order to achieve that happiness. It's not going to come to us, right? Think about it. If you're sitting on a sofa and you're just sitting there and waiting for someone to come knock on your door and offer your job, it's not going to happen, right? It's not going to happen. So everything that we want, we have to work for it. We have to strive to get where we want to go in life. And the number one priority everyone wants is to be happy. That's what we all want. But how can we achieve this happiness without the guide, the proper plan to get us there? And you can. And I'm here to share this information with you because it is really my deep concern and we're wanting to see people happy. Everybody wants that, but we don't know how to get there. And this is what I'm here. This is what God has given me, thank God, the wisdom, the understanding to help others to achieve that. So let's look at this. The first thing that we need to understand is that we need to understand this world was created with God plans. It cannot function any other way. You can do whatever you wanna do trying to get around that, it's never going to happen. And if you don't believe me, think about this. Ask your mother, your father, your uncles, your brothers or sisters, and see if they're happy. Ask them if they're happy. And these are your close people who are close to you and they're telling you and they're sharing their experience about why they are not happy. Because it was created for God to be the center of our life. Everything we need to do or do should be, um, God should be in the center of that. It should revolve around God. It's through that avenue is how we will ever achieve happiness. If you ask older people, the one thing about older people that I like personally is this, they learn the hard way that they were not happy. What do they all have in common if you notice? Most older people tend to be either humble, they gave up what they thought they had to do or they were doing already they young, and most of them, they turn to religion, they turn to God. They realize that's the only solution. God is the only solution. You can run, but eventually you're running towards God. You're thinking you're running from God, but you're running towards God. Everybody runs towards God eventually, okay? Everybody runs towards God because that's where it's going to lead you whether you want or not. But why not save yourself the heartache? Just look around. Look at your own family members. Look at your friends. Are they happy? Why are they not happy? Are you doing the same thing they're doing? Are you doing the same thing? If you are doing the same thing, guess what? You're going to end up with the same result because there's only one way and you can be happy. You can. But the problem is we don't want that avenue. We don't want it. I remember before I started really getting into the word of God, understanding him. And I remember one time I was in the mall and you know, and the more you have people come up to you with these pamphlets saying God loves you, you know, God wants you, he missed you, he wants you to come home. At that time I was young, I'm like, oh, you know, I have my whole life ahead of me. I have plans, you know, there's things I want to do. I'm not there yet, you know, um, people who are into God are those who are older people, you know. That's my was my thinking. But I knew that I would eventually get there, but not right now. It wasn't for me because I had my own plan. But guess what? That was the biggest mistake I ever made in my life. If I had listened and came to God earlier, my life would look completely different than what it looks today. And also I would have avoided so much pain and disappointment that I wouldn't have had to go through. But simply why? But guess what? I just said earlier, we may run from God, but we actually running towards God. And that's what happened. I had to run into it. And this is why I am today. I ran into God. 
because why he led me that way. And to be honest with you, I am so much more happier today than I've ever been in my entire life because why? There's a peace. There's a peace in knowing God and following his plan and not having doubts. Imagine living a life without doubts. What does that mean? If there's no doubts, meaning that you have peace. If you know you're doing everything right, what God wants you to do, and it's working out, that's the ultimate peace, ladies and gentlemen. That's the ultimate peace. So how do we get there in terms of why don't we follow God? And this world was created for that. It was created for us to follow his plan. So I want to share a few things with you in regards to that. It's one that we have. We have to understand this is his plan. It's not going to change. It was there before creation. It's going to be there after we're done. It's not going to change. We only under the illusion that we can change, alter, you know, circumvent God's words. We can get around there. We can do what we want to do at the end. You're going to run into God. Okay. And the first thing is to understand his rules. Once you understand what his rule is, then you have to apply that. Meaning that if you hear this video and then you just listen to it and you're not applying it, then guess what? You're still stuck in that position you are now because you're not going nowhere. You have to apply it. As you apply it, you will see the results. But again, the mistake a lot of people make when it comes to God, following God's plan, is they're thinking they're supposed to have instant results. God does not work like that. First, he has to clean you up. He has to clean you up. And that takes time. Meaning that you have to learn and learn and learn. And knowing God takes a huge amount of data. Just because you don't see him or hear from him and his voice. But we do hear from God. But in the, not in a voice sense. We hear from God by the troubles he brings into our lives. Yes. That's how God is speaking to you. The troubles that comes into your life is God speaking to you wanting to get your attention. He's not going to verbally speak to you because he's not human. He's not flesh. But he brings it through troubles. So once you understand what he wants and you and you apply it, you will start to see it. But do not get discouraged and give up. It takes time. It took me a long time to get where I am today. It did not happen overnight. And if anyone tells you otherwise, they're lying to you. Because God is huge. It takes time to understand him, to understand his words and to be able to see and apply those words and to see their result. So now, most people, and I noticed that, the other um, mistakes that I made was that, again, thinking that I had all the time in the world. But guess what? That time I thought I had was wasted. It was wasted. It's a shame. It really is. Because when I look back, I see how much more joy I could have had early in life if I had listened to those people that came up to me in the mall and approaching me, telling me about God. But something I want to address to show you what happens to people who don't have God in their life, that God is not the center of their life. It does not matter how successful these people are. They actually are the biggest losers. What does God say in the Bible? He lets you grow, 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 get to the highest level and chop your neck off. Why? Because you're going against him. He gave you that success. That success you are enjoying did not come from your effort. He gave you that. Everything we have is being given to us. The question is, what do we do with it? That's the question. So let's look at Something that someone that's really popular in the media that you all can relate to is Will Smith. He is the icon, the iconic of what we all look and consider to be successful. He seems to have everything. And reality, he does. By our standard, he does. But if you notice, this man is miserable. He's not happy. How can it be? Everyone in the world know who you are. You have fame, fortune. You know, you're treated like royalty, but yet you're not happy. How is it possible for a human being to have so much and be miserable? How can that be? Well, the answer is, ladies and gentlemen, without God, it doesn't matter how much you have, you will end up like him. 
at the end you will end up like him so let's look at it first i would say is this you know people are speaking about it and you know they, everyone has their opinion but first i want to say what he did was wrong so let's first get that clear what he did was absolutely wrong god says you are not allowed to put your hands or bring harm to anyone under any circumstance except one that is to protect your life and others that's the only time you can do that and also remember you're not even allowed to take your own life you see that god cherished the life he gave us he gave us this life because we are unique there is a specific purpose we were created to fulfill here you are very very special even though you don't feel you don't think believe me if you were not special if you were not unique he would not have created you everything god create has a purpose if you are here and you are listening to this video you have purpose you have meaning you are beautiful you are wonderful because he created you what you need to do is find what that purpose is and you can do it if you watch these videos and listening it will you will see that how to get to your purpose. that's another video how to find your purpose but again ladies and gentlemen you can do this you have purpose do not think for one moment that you were created without a purpose and were not loved you are now another thing is this that people think god loves everyone he does not love everyone and let me ask you a question do you love satan no next question do you love evil people ah evil people so you see if you don't love evil people then how can you expect god to love evil people so therefore god does not love everyone okay so that's a misconception god does not love everyone the same way you don't love evil people he does not love evil people the same way you don't love satan he doesn't love satan Okay, so now let's look at a few things. How would Will Smith's life would be if he had God in his life? How would it look? Well, one, if you notice people who are really heavy Christian, you notice their mindset is different. Don't you notice that? If you ever spoke to a Christian, sit down and spoke to a Christian and listen to them, they're positive and they see life in a different light. Why? Because they have this anchor called God, this hope, they hold on to, they can see it. It's not that they're just telling you this. They understand and see it and they're operating on that principle that God is running the world. He's in charge and I'm safe. He's protecting me. He's guiding me. I'm not alone. There's a supervisor. There's someone that is guiding my footstep that is protecting me. But when you don't have that, you're doing everything on your own power. That will lead to destruction, self-destruction, disparity, disappointment, unhappiness, and you're going to fall. With Will, Will Smith, why would he go up and slap this man? Why would he do that? Because there's no God in him. There's no fear. First, if there were God, he would have been fear, knowing that you can't harm another person. So fear would have immediately taken over. He would have known that, you see? So because he did not have God, that's why he's able to get up and do what he's done. But again, this man is in a lot of pain. I feel bad for him because to be such an iconic person out there and, you know, and then this is what you have portrayed and show yourself to the entire world but again it's a good example for all of us not that it's his situation is good no i'm only using it to show you that it doesn't matter how successful you are you're going to fail without god you're going to fail it's just a matter of when that's all it is just a matter of when but again imagine having this much of power and you don't in god imagine the joy you would have Imagine the joy he would have waking up every morning knowing the blessing God has given him. It wasn't his own. It wasn't his own turning his own horn thinking that he'd done this. Knowing that God is allowing me to wake up every day to do what I'm doing. Imagine he had that mindset. So, one, as I said, 
I feel bad for him because to be at that level and be unhappy and imagine how long he's been unhappy. Obviously, this man been unhappy for a long time. And how do I know? Well, how can you be happy if your wife is unhappy? It's not possible for anyone to be happy in a relationship if one of the spouse is unhappy. It's not possible because why? That spouse is going to create a situation in that marriage that's going to make you unhappy. They're going to make you unhappy. So he's been unhappy for a long time. How long? I don't know, but a very, very long time. Where? To the point where he snapped. Nobody can endure this level of intense of unhappiness and be able to function normally. You can't. It doesn't matter who you are. You see? And this is what God has shown the world through Will Smith. It doesn't matter how high you climb. It doesn't matter how high you go. If I am not in the center of your life, you're not going to be happy or keep your success. You're not. Because I give you all this and you did not appreciate or acknowledge me. You didn't make me part of your life. Had you made me part of your life, I've given you so much. And I would have added increase. What would I increase to your life? I would increase joy and happiness in your marriage and where you feel almost completely invincible to the point. Because why? I'm in the center. But if you look in Hollywood, he's not the only one that falls in that category. Pretty much everyone's in that category. Look at these different stars. Let's look at um, Kim Kardashian. Two kids divorced. How many times she's been married? But she has all this wealth. But guess what? It's really meaningless. It's meaningless if you're unhappy. Happiness only can come through God. Every one of you. It doesn't matter where you are right now in life. You can become happy. You can. You can achieve that. Knowing, just to know that he's running my life. He's controlling my every step, my every move. All I need to do is to know what he wants me to do, how to do it. That's it. You know, it's interesting. I like this. Uh, this person put it this way. When your boss asks you to do something, you don't question it. Why? You're almost happy to do what your boss asks you to do, right? Especially if it's your first or second day or three weeks on a job. You're full of excitement to do whatever the boss tells you to do, you want to do. And what are you getting from this boss? A paycheck. Does that paycheck make you happy? No, it's just a paycheck to pay your light, your phone, your house, your water, to keep you breathing, to keep you alive, right? But look what God does for us. He does so much more, but yet we don't acknowledge him. And the interesting thing about that too is this. We try to do everything outside God Everything else like God. But when it doesn't work, what did not work, now what you didn't or what you thought could not work using God now becomes a solution for you. People who have done things on their own and failed, they end up running back to God. And now God is a solution for them in their life. And now they get to see it is true. Why do we go that route? Why do we want to do things? And then when it fails, we run to God, and then we realize God was right all along. Well, that's a typical person who does not learn about God. But again, like I said at the beginning, you run from him, but you're actually running to him when you're running from him. You're running to him. What you have done is put yourself through a lot of hardship, unnecessary hardship, to get where you should have been the entire time. So... We're continuing as far as I said, look all the success he has and he's not happy. How is that even possible? A person with that much wealth and success should be like waking up every morning just floating, you know, just like he's walking in the cloud. But it doesn't work like that. Think about what I'm telling you. Examine all these people in Hollywood. You making these people your icons, your idols, you idolizing these people. What are you really idolizing about them? I can tell you this much. You probably have more peace 
than these people you idolize. You know that? Yeah, you probably have more peace than these people you idolize. It's an illusion, an illusion of fantasy world. These people are in a fantasy world, in an illusion. We who are average people are in a reality. Now, if you take that reality that you in, God put you in, and you add God to that reality, believe me, that reality you are will be a billion times better than what they're in. What they're in, ladies and gentlemen, is in hell. It's hell on earth. That's what it is. It may not seem or look like it, but that's what it is. Because these people are, are, what's the word I'm looking for? So unhappy. They don't know what to do themselves. The only reason they may seem they're functional is because they have this money to buy things to fulfill that emptiness, to try to cover that emptiness. If you notice, that emptiness can never be filled. You can buy all the things you want to buy. I remember someone telling me about this rich person, this rich lady. She would shop every day. She just shopping and shopping and shopping. And then at the end of the year, she would give thousands. When I say thousands, thirty, forty, sixty thousand dollars worth of clothes, she would give away with the tag on there. She never tried on clothes, shoes. Fifty, sixty thousand dollars. She bought them, she just put them in the closet. Why did she buy them? It was at that moment she was empty. You you ever been home where you're bored, you feel like you have to do something, right? You, you've been there before. You're bored. Oh, I gotta do something. And you're looking around the house, there's nothing to do. And all of a sudden, you grab your keys, rush out the door, going for a drive, looking for something to do. Why? Because suddenly, an emptiness of feeling hits you. An emptiness of feeling hits you and you have to do something to fulfill it. But the beauty about people who have God in that center, that center or that emptiness is being plugged up with God. So there's a hole like the draining of your tub, the water drain. God plugs that. I, you know, Of course, it's a raw analogy to use. But he plugs that hole of emptiness where you don't feel that emptiness. And that's what he does for us when we bring God or we make him the center of our lives. Again, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for sharing with me. But again, share these videos. If you have people you love and you know they're struggling, trying to understand this world, trying to find happiness. And th these days and age, people are not happy. They are not happy and they will never be. I'm telling you right now. They will never be until they come to accept God and operate by his rules. There's no way around it. I fought it. And guess look where I am. And I can tell you, I'm very satisfied with where I am. I thank God for that. Because it was at one point, I questioned just like you. What did this mean? What am I supposed to do? It doesn't make sense. I had questions after question, endless questions. Those questions are been answered for me, and I thank God for that. And if you are at that point in your life, you're wondering why you cannot be happy, what's missing, God is the one that's missing. But again, remember, God also has rules how to function in this world. And, you know, you can't not think that God's not going to have rules, because why man has rules? When you drive your car, there's rules, traffic rules. When you go to court, there's rules. When you go to the library, there's rules. When you walk into any public office or any office, there's rules how to conduct yourself. There's rules when you go to the hospital. There's rules when you're a student, when you're in a classroom. There's rules on your job. So everywhere has rules. So you cannot expect God to leave you in this world and not give you rules to guide you. What are the rules for? The rules are for your protection. That's what rules is for. Rules are for protections. So if you want to be protected, you need to learn God's ways and apply those rules to your life. It's not simply listening to this video and then just forgetting, because guess what? Your life's not going to move until you move. That's the way it works. Your life is not going to move until you move. You want that happiness, then you need to move by applying these concepts into your life. Also, 
share it again share this video subscribe when i put out new videos you can um, get them receive them and then you can keep learning go back and listen to them because every time you listen to it you're going to discover new information i'm going to tell you right now one thing about god word is once people speak about the word of god it's not that you learn two plus two is four and that's it you got it it doesn't work like now with god words god word is not where it's um um finite it's infinite meaning that you can go over it and you're going to keep learning new information as you go over it and over it so i thank you all for sharing and i thank you all for being with me learning together again god bless you i thank you for being here and i'll see you next time